I've got another giant build that I've been working on, and this one is for Sims that I'm actually playing with, so I'm warning you right now, it's a little bit more chaotic than usual. You see, this one is for my Not So Berry Legacy Challenge, and that challenge is all about color themes, and also kind of about chaos, at least when I play it. I am not kidding, I have a collection of 275 graves that I keep in this house's front yard, and the sims that live here I have been playing with for 18 generations. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just dive straight into the build, and I'll walk you through what we're working with. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just dive straight into the game and I'll walk you through what we're building today. So for some quick context, I'm playing- So for some quick context, the Not So Berry Challenge is a 10 generation legacy challenge where each generation is based off of a different color theme. The idea is that all of the traits and the rules and the story is kind of based around that color, which sounds really weird. And it is kind of a weird concept. I wrote this back in like 2017 with my friend Zoe. And currently I'm playing the Peach generation. Peach is the eighth generation of the Not So Berry challenge, and it's the 18th generation of this save because I played a full 10 generation legacy and then stopped and started the Not So Berry challenge in the same save with the same family. And the Peach Sim has the foodie, lazy, and goofball traits. Kind of the idea there was to have all of the traits sort of match the color of the generation. So if you look closely, the icons of those traits are like kind of a peachy color. By the later parts of this challenge, we were kind of running out of traits, but we tried our best to sort of fit that theme. And then we based the rest of the rules for that generation around the traits. So the sim that lives here is supposed to have a bit of a midlife crisis. They start out in the detective career and then eventually quit their job to become a joke star. And because I like to play very generationally, I also have my sim's mom living here, so like the grandma's here, the grandma's horse is here. We have a huge family all living in this one house. And also with this challenge, I really like to go all out with the color theme, more so than I maybe normally would. Because like normally with a normal sims build, I'd probably use more more than one color on the interior. But with the Not So Berry Challenge, I really go all out with the color of the generation. So this house, being the peach gen house, is extremely peach colored. Like, every single thing in this house is peach. You know when that solid color challenge used to be popular on YouTube a while back, where you would try and make an entire house all one color, and like, if there wasn't a green toilet, then too bad, you can't have a toilet? That's a bad example because there is a green toilet, but you get what I mean? That's kind of like like what my Not So Berry Challenge builds are, where I just really, really embrace the color theme. So upon first glance, these houses are maybe a little bit ugly. <laughs> or at least maybe a little bit silly, because they are so monochrome. And then, to make matters worse, I usually decorate the bedrooms for the other generation. So like I said, my sim's mom lives here. Her mom is from the pink generation, so her mom's bedroom is hot pink. And then, even worse, the kids are gonna be from the green generation, so the kids' bedrooms are like lime green. So everything in the entire house is basically all one color except for a few of the bedrooms. And this is why I felt the need to warn you that this house is maybe a little bit chaotic. And I will say, I am very proud of this build, and I actually think the exterior is one of my favorite exteriors that I've built in a really long time. It took me a little bit to figure out what I was going for, but once I made it work, I think the backyard and the back patio in particular is really, really beautiful. So don't be too put off just yet and try Trust the process, okay? Because I promise this is gonna work. It's it's just gonna take us a minute to figure out what we're going for. <laughs> But I swear it looks good in the end, if not maybe a little bit shocking on the inside. And that's okay, Some, sometimes that's fun, right? Oh, and if any of you have ever been to my Twitch streams or maybe seen any of my past speed builds from the Not So Berry Challenge, you'll know about this already. But you know how I have that giant collection of graves that I mentioned in the front yard? You see, I literally have graves just lined up, filling almost the entire front of the building. So if anything, the color theme is not the most shocking part part of this building, so that makes it better, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least that helps. We've got graves, we've got horses, we've got a shark pond so I can kill my sims. Like, there's so much going on here. We'll get into that though. I think first I want to walk you through why I decided to build this in Tartosa, because when I started thinking about where I was going to build this peach house, I was trying to figure out where it would make the most sense. And I was also kind of trying to figure out what packs had the most 
peachy items because I would argue that peach is probably one of, if not the hardest colors to try to match out of the whole challenge. Some of the others are a little bit more obvious, like pink and blue and green, but peach is sort of a weird one because what is peach? Peach is like an in-between of pink and orange, at least in my mind. Peaches, the fruit, are very pink and, and like the peachy color, I think, is sort of like almost a little bit beige even. So peach is very subjective. Like when you're trying to build something like this, <laughs> there isn't one clear-cut answer to what peach is, and so it makes it really hard to find items in the game that fit what you're going for. And it's especially hard to try and match stuff together in the game because there's so many different variants of what maybe could work. So it took me a long time to figure out how to furnish this build just because I was digging around so much trying to find the right items. And I'm gonna complain about my past self for a second because I did write this challenge, so <laughs> I'm allowed to bully myself for my poor challenge writing choices, but for some reason, when I wrote this challenge, I put the orange, pink, and then peach generations in a row. So I built an orange house, I built a pink house, and then I built a pink and orange house with this peach one. So they've all been quite similar in color scheme recently. I guess I didn't really think about the implications of that when I wrote the challenge a long time ago. And in my defense, I was still in high school. I was 17. I didn't think anybody was ever gonna actually do this challenge. I wrote it just because my friends and I wanted to play it. Like we, we didn't really think that it would take off or like other people would ever, ever play it. It was just for us and then we shared it because why not was kind of the situation so I didn't realize how annoying the order of the colors would be, and for that I apologize. <laughs> Again, it was a long time ago, how could I have known? And now I just sit here at 24 years old and complain about my 17 year old self and her poor choices. So as you can probably see already, this house is really quite big. In total, it's five bedrooms, but it also has an office, so that kinda could pass as a sixth bedroom. I have two bedrooms downstairs and then three more upstairs. Kind of the idea was to have the primary bedroom downstairs and then grandma's bedroom downstairs and then save the upstairs for the kids. But downstairs we also have the office because my sim's mom is supposed to be a writer so she needs an office space to work in. But then the peach gen sim is supposed to be a comedian who plays instruments so I kind of wanted to have like a music room area. So downstairs next to the office we have a huge music space and then upstairs there's like a giant empty loft that I tried to furnish like a games room. And then in the backyard we also have a barn because my sim has a horse. <laughs> so <laughs> there's just a lot going on here. It's also an extremely expensive build, but I guess the benefit here is that I've been playing in this family for so long that I've got a lot of money saved up over the years. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the 18th generation of this family, so we've been playing for a while and we've got a lot to work with, but at this point we're starting to actually work on the backyard and you might have just seen me do a really interesting little like splashing pool in the middle of the main pool. I did a bunch of weird things with like the shape of the pool and the terrain around the pool, so you're probably looking at that like what the heck are you doing? And this is actually a really cool idea that I had seen in a YouTube short from a person called Storm Design. They made a little tutorial for how to do it, and what they basically did was try to make a toddler splash pad almost in the middle of the pool. Because if you didn't know, your toddlers can actually waddle around and kind of splash a little bit inside of low levels of terrain ponds. It has to be small, but if it's shallow enough, they can actually walk in there, and so can your adult sims. And so what they did is try to have a little bit of that shallow water kind of in the middle of the pool, and I'll link that short down below in case you want to go back and watch it and see the tutorial for yourself. I'll put it in the description box so you can go and see. But it's kind of a fun idea, and it makes the pool look a lot more interesting, I think, because it isn't just one big flat rectangle. What I will say after playing in it for a long time is that the Sims don't use the whole thing. When they wade in the water like that, they will get in it, but they'll only get in the tiny little front bit. So the Sims will kind of stand on like the very short part of this water, like the tiny one tile wide entrance is where they will go. So it's not really about function for me, it's more about looks. I just kind of liked how it looked here in the backyard and that's why I included it. But I did think it was a cool idea because I don't usually experiment with terrain manipulation very much. I don't really think that I'm the best with terrain tools because I just don't really use them. So it was a fun chance to try and mess around a little bit with them and also like start experimenting some more. Now that I've done this, I feel a bit more
more confident about trying to include slight bits of terrain into more of my builds, because I don't really want to build like all of my houses on a hill, but I, I can see myself incorporating a little bit of terrain. <laughs> this is basically just a pond, but I think it's a nice feature. You're also seeing in the backyard, I have like this little pergola across from the pool, and then back behind the pool is the horse barn, <laughs> and where I have the horse training stuff. Again, this is where the build gets really chaotic, because these sims have a horse. I, I got a horse back when we first got the horse pack, and then I very quickly realized that I was way too overwhelmed to have a horse in this household. I had like eight sims. I, I did not have time to have a horse and infants and work on my career. Like, it was just way too much. But then I had the horse, and I was committed to taking care of it, but I guess I didn't take care of it that well because I, I would just cheat its needs. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to announce, the horse in question passed away. <laughs> <laughs> it just died like last week. <laughs> the last time I opened up this save is when the horse died. When I show you the tour at the end of this video, it's very possible that the Sims might still have the sad moodlet from the horse dying. <laughs> it's not funny, it's not funny, I'm sorry. The horse's name was Strawberry, she was a unicorn, and she lived a very long and very happy life. I promise that she was very happy because I kept cheating her needs and pressing make happy, make happy, so <laughs> I know she was fine. But yeah, she is now dead, and thankfully I was able to add her horse grave to my collection in the front yard. But while I sit here and try and work on fixing the roof clipping, let me give you a couple life updates. I like to use these speed builds almost like little podcasty life update moments, so I've got a couple things for you. First of all, Happy New Year! This is my last Sims video of the entire year. Tomorrow I'm gonna post like a highlight reel of like funny clips and moments from the year, so this is like the last normal video I'm posting this year. And last weekend was Christmas, I had a good time with my family. I did a lot of baking, which I always really enjoy, and I also also burnt my finger with molten hot sugar. I just, I can't believe that I did this because I am not like a stranger to using melted sugar. I've, I've done it before. I like to build gingerbread houses and use melted sugar to put the pieces together. But for some reason I was being so stupid and, and I spilled a drop of sugar on my finger. Anyway, I'm okay. It hurt, <laughs> but it's not like bad anymore. It's still healing. It's just kind of gross looking. So I put a band-aid on so you don't have to see it. And I never did finish that gingerbread house. I was putting the second piece together when I burnt my finger. And then obviously I stopped because I had to like soak my finger in cold water and like cry because I was so distraught. It didn't even hurt that bad. I think I was mostly just sh like in shock about the fact that I burnt myself and I was like upset that I did it and kind of mad at myself for doing it. So it was a whole thing. Anyway, again, I'm fine. And then the other big and probably more exciting life update is about the cats. So as many of you know, I recently adopted a couple of kittens that I found in a sewer a few months ago. I was like fostering mom and all three babies and then I adopted two of the babies and my parents adopted the mom and the other sibling. Well, the big update is that one of the babies is officially bigger than Snap, my other cat, my 15 year old adult cat. Little Shrimp is six months old and he weighs almost nine pounds and Snap weighs only 8.4 pounds. I really thought that he was getting close to being the same size, if not maybe a little bit bigger than her, but I couldn't tell. When you look at them, she looks a bit bigger than him still because she's a lot fluffier and also Obviously, he's just a baby, so he's kind of lanky. He's in that like awkward teenage phase, but they're about the same height. So like at a glance, they look the same ish size. And then he had his post neuter vet appointment checkup. So when I took him there, they weighed him and he officially weighs 8.94 pounds. So he's like a whole half pound bigger than Snap now. And again, he's only six months old. He's just a baby. So he's gonna be huge when he gets full grown. It's been so funny for me to watch them grow and like watch all this happen because his sister is only 5.4 pounds. I know a lot of you guys aren't from America and don't use pounds as weight measurement, but just, you know, 5.4 is a lot smaller than 9, okay? So <laughs> take my word for it. These kittens have truly been like the highlight of my life recently. Being able to like take care of them and watch them grow and like having saved them from a sewer, it's it's just been really special. So I'm sorry I talk about them so much. It, it's just really taking over my life, okay? <laughs> and I love Snap. She is my best friend in the entire world. I've had her since I was 9 years old. I just don't have as many frequent updates on her because she isn't a kitten, so she's not like growing and, and doing wild and wacky things like climbing the Christmas tree. She's just very old and very calm and just cuddles and, and you know, sometimes hisses at babies. But it's easier to give more frequent updates on the kittens because more is changing more quickly, obviously. I get a lot of questions about Snap, but you know, nothing has changed really. She's, she's still kicking. A few months ago, she was diagnosed with kidney disease, which isn't really uncommon. A lot
lot of cats have kidney disease in their older age. It's like super normal. Basically cats kind of like outlive their kidneys. So she's on a prescription diet now for her kidneys, but otherwise not much is going on. She's still minding her business. She's very playful still. She recently got this really creepy little like eyeball toy. And when I tell you this thing has changed her life, I have never seen her more obsessed with anything ever before, ever. It's like this weird little bouncy ball eyeball and it has like a tail, <laughs> which when you describe it, it sounds so weird. But cause it's a bouncy ball, she can hit it and then chase it. And then it like chases her back. It, she really, really likes it. So that's Snap's big update, I guess. Eyeballs and kidney disease. So that's what I've been up to recently. At this point in the video, you can see we are still working on the exterior. I was obviously very, very excited about trying to make this like really perfect on the outside. I was also just having a lot of fun with this. I found a lot of items that were so perfect for it. Specifically, the Desert Luxe Kit has a bunch of kind of peachy toned items. They have like this nice peachy toned stone color and it's on the fireplace, it's on this nice lounge chair, it's even on the couches. So I was using those like all over the place. I also found this kind of, it's more of like a beige dusty rose color than peach, but we have this like nice beige-ish, peachy-ish color counter. And then we even have peachy colored appliances for it outside. Who knew that the new Home Chef Hustle Pack has a peach colored pizza oven? <laughs> so we've actually gotten a lot of really nice new peach colored things recently that I was trying to use around here, which was actually a huge relief because like I was mentioning earlier, it's really hard to find stuff that fits this color. So when I found a couple packs that had a few things that worked, I was like, yes, <laughs> we can use these all over the place. I'm gonna use that same couch everywhere. So I, I really, um, I made use of that one. One of my other favorite parts of this, just in general, is that little grill and bar area because I use this peachy colored grill. We have the peachy colored pizza oven. There's a bar that matches. And then I strung these beautiful fairy lights across it with some like trellises on the side. And I don't know, I just thought it looked really nice there. I felt like the backyard of this place came together really well. And I think it might be one of my favorite back patios that I've ever built. And because I've been playing in this house for a while, I found it really useful for gameplay as well. There's just a ton of open space. So it's got plenty of room for like school projects or like the toddler playground equipment, all that stuff that can be kind of hard to find a location for. I was able to fit back here when I needed to play with it. It's always really fun for me to make speed builds on houses that I've been actively playing in. I mention this all the time, but most of the houses that I built for my YouTube videos, I don't actually end up playing with, which makes sense because just this week I've posted like four build videos. There's only so many houses that a person can use in The Sims, you know? I, I don't have a need for all of these builds and I mostly just build to build because I think the building part is fun. I'm not always making these builds because I need to use them for my own gameplay. And when I do end up needing a build for my own gameplay, I don't often use one of my older builds. I tend to just make a new one again because again, I like to build. So if my Sims need a new house, I'm not gonna go shopping on my own gallery. I'm just gonna make a new one because I, I like to build new ones. So when I do get to make videos about houses that I've been actively playing in, it's always kind of fun for me to point out like little quirks of stuff that I've been using. We'll do a big tour at the end and I'll show you around all of my stuff. There's a couple little highlights of this house. Like for example, these Sims also have a fire toilet like my Legacy Challenge here on YouTube does. And they also have a ton of like little clutter items and family photos that I've kind of peppered around the house. That's one of those things that just makes the house seem so much more lively. Getting to use photos of your Sims and like having all of their long-term collection items in there. Like a lot of my Sims, I collect the snow globes that come from City Living. And just kind of dotting around some of the snow globes or like those simi capsules from Snowy Escape. It's such a nice touch to have those little details around the place. I feel like it makes the place look so much better. And I just don't really do that in my other builds. I guess I could be digging around in debug for that, but I'm not gonna put up family photos in a house that I'm building for the gallery. Cause I can only assume that most of you probably don't wanna have photos of somebody else's Sims in a house that you're planning on playing in. Well, I mean, maybe you do. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> But I don't usually put those things in on the gallery because I feel like most people don't want them. And like in this version, I didn't record myself adding all that stuff in. I built the whole house, stopped recording, and then moved my Sims in and put all of my stuff back. It's kind of weird because I'll like build the house for the speed build and I'll like put the fridge, put the TV. And then when I actually go to move in, I'll delete the fridge and delete the TV <laughs> and then bring the ones that I have from my old house instead. My Sims have a lot of money, but we do still have to kind of save up some money because we only have, as you can see, like 40 2,000 simoleons left and we still have pretty much the entire house to furnish, <laughs> which is kind of alarming, but don't worry, don't worry. I'll warn you now, in this video, I didn't furnish the kids 
kids' bedrooms because at this point when I built this, I didn't have any kids yet. It was just my Sam, her mom, and her brother. So I furnished the rooms for all of them and then left the extra two bedrooms empty for when I did eventually have future infants. And thankfully, infant furniture is kind of cheap anyway. Like the cribs aren't really that expensive, so it wasn't too bad. And this is gonna kind of date this video, but I actually did build this before the rent pack came out. In fact, it's even worse than you think. I actually built this back in October. <laughs> I, I built this around like October 6th and I haven't posted it on YouTube yet. This happened with the last Not So Berry house too. I built like a giant pink horse ranch back right when the horse ranch pack came out and then I didn't post it on YouTube until like December 1st or something, which was months later. And that caused this one to get delayed too, you see? I had to post them in order, so it's not my fault. I've also been very distracted posting all of, you know, the new apartment pack content, so I wasn't gonna post a wedding stories build. Sorry, that was mean. <laughs> wedding stories, she isn't the best pack for The Sims 4, but at least the world is nice. I'll give them that. Tartosa is a really nice place to be. It's, it's beautiful, the world is big, it has a bunch of lots. This lot in particular is the 50 by 40 lot that usually the wedding venue is on, but I bulldozed it so I could live here instead. And we're reaching a dangerous point in this legacy challenge because at this point, 50 by 40 is almost not big enough for me. And that's really bad. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Start living on a 64 by 64 lot? I guess I just did. I just came from a giant 64 by 64 horse ranch, but I don't wanna always live on 64 by 64 lots. It's too much. I think they're fun to build on occasion, but I don't know if I can do one every time. I am very much a small lot, small house kind of person, which sounds really funny coming from me today specifically as I am building this giant house on a giant lot, but I much prefer my Sims to have like smaller homes. I wanna have small, really cluttered homes. I don't like to have big wide open spaces for the most part. And I don't like having multiple floors either. Maybe this stems from me growing up in a one story house. And maybe it's also just a Sims thing where it's like kind of annoying to have to like page up and down and like search around to try and find all your Sims. But I find it a lot nicer to play in a smaller house. It's like more fun to build bigger houses, but I find playing in smaller houses to be preferable. I'm kind of curious to hear what your thoughts are on that. I feel like the average Sims player probably likes to build like big giant places and then live in big giant places. Cause that's kind of what I used to do when I was a kid. When I was little, I would build just big giant rectangles. <laughs> and put like everything in the game all in there. But now as an adult, I prefer to shrink it and then kind of have my Sims struggle. Like I almost won't put all the things that they need instead of having extra stuff because I just prefer for them to suffer a little bit more. That sounds so bad when you say it out loud, but I know I'm not alone in that. Right now at this point in the video though, we're doing some last minute little clutter detail in the kitchen and trying to fill it all up. I'm adding some nice stuff on the shelves and putting a lot of that Home Chef Hustle decor in there because Home Chef Hustle is such a nice pattern. I am so glad they made a kitchen stuff pack. I feel like it's such an improvement compared to the original kitchen stuff pack, the cool kitchen stuff pack. This one is just so much better. It has so much more in it. It's such an improvement. And the gameplay is fun with the new recipes. I really, really like Home Chef Hustle. I so badly wish we got stuff packs instead of kits. The kits are just never as good. There is always nice stuff in the kits, but the stuff packs are just unmatched. The fact that it has gameplay and the build stuff and create a sim stuff compared to just like one little tiny build set is such a huge difference, but I'm sorry, I'll stop complaining. <laughs> I have this same conversation like every day. Right now we are making the primary bedroom. This is the room where the Peach Gen Sim is going to live. So they have a huge primary bedroom and a nice ensuite bathroom. And I don't know if you can see, but sort of next to this room, there's also their mom's room. So like granny's bedroom and the office kind of off to the side over here. And I will say, I actually had a really hard time organizing this Peach Gen room. I struggled a lot with the floor plan and I went back and forth a lot on how I should furnish it. Again, this Peach peach color scheme thing is so hard to work with because what is peach? I knew I wanted to use that floral wallpaper because it brought in a little bit of an accent color, but it still had like that nice peachy flower on it. So I was kind of trying to match all of that stuff together and I was just struggling so much in here. I think the bedroom was probably the hardest part of the whole house for me to furnish. The rest of it came together a little bit easier, but this bedroom was, was a lot. You can kind of see me right now trying like a million different rug swatches, trying to see what's gonna work. And then I even 
even had a hard time trying to figure out what else to put in here because it's quite a big room. So I knew I was gonna have the bed, but I wanted to have a dresser and a desk and where should I put them? It looks like I actually even cut out the rest because it was me spending so much time trying to figure it out that it was bad to watch. <laughs> But now we are moving on into this like I, I call it the music room But it's almost like a little open hallway area in here I put all of the music stuff that my sim needs so she has to max the comedy skill But also play some instruments So I want her to have a dedicated space for all of that And then I also use this room almost as like a nice area to display all of my collectibles So I have a wall for photos and if you see that little nook where I've put the counters and the shelves That's where I put all of my collection stuff because I have a ton of those simi capsules I've got a bunch of those like little guys the my sim trophy things and so I made a dedicated space to put all of that stuff up right here and I think it looks kind of cool it's kind of like a fancy collector's cabinet except it's the sims and it's just like one big wall of shelves you also may have seen me page up just then for a second a bit ago and that area upstairs is where like there's a big game room in the stair landing I don't usually have this problem but in this house the place was like so big that I was almost struggling to find stuff to fill it all in with <laughs> so I had to resort to like rats from my first pet stuff and game tables up there and don't even get me started on the rat. I'm sorry for talking bad about my first pet stuff because I know it's free right now so you should go grab it still even if I'm gonna complain about it but oh my god I have this rat that I keep upstairs I've had it for a while but there's a known bug with my first pet stuff where the rats will die but they don't die they're still in there it'll tell you that your rat has died from starvation which makes no sense because the rat's food bowl is full and and then everybody in the house gets a baby whisked away moodlet, which is the one that happens when you have a sim get taken away by child services. But there is no baby, the rat's not dead, and the rat isn't hungry. It's still up there. It's still just in the cage. I don't know what causes this bug, and it happens to me with all of the rodents, like maybe a rat, maybe a hamster, any of them, I still have it. And it'll go like maybe a week in game without happening, and then it'll happen like four times all in one day. And I, I don't understand what's causing it, and it's been happening literally for years <laughs> for like maybe four or five years at this point I remember this happening back in my 100 baby challenge that I was posting on YouTube years ago and for some reason it's still happening and they still haven't fixed it whenever I talk about this like half of my twitch chat is like oh my god it's so annoying it happens to me too and the other half is like I've never had that happen before so I need to know in the comments do you have this rat problem especially now the pack is free and you've been playing with it more I assume do you have the rat problem has it happened to to you? Have you noticed a pattern with the rat problem? Can you like track down what's causing it? Because it is making me so mad. In this save, I have a rat called Alan and his name is Alan9 because I've replaced him nine times. Granted, some of those he actually did die, but most of them were because he was glitched. So I deleted him on purpose and then got a new one. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I get kind of heated about rats in The Sims 4. But at this point, we are almost done with the speed build. I still have a few parts that I haven't furnished yet in this video, but I'll show you a tour of it in the finished product in a second. What I want to do now is pop back into the game and show you around the whole place because I kind of ran out of money when I was recording and so we had to stop. But now I've been playing in it for a while, so we have a fully furnished build to show. I'm just going to warn you again that this lot is the one with the 275 graves. So on the gallery, there are no graves. What you're about to see, there are a lot of graves, okay? So just like brace yourselves. Oh, well this is horrible. I forgot, I forgot my Sims mom died too. The last time I played the horse died and my previous legacy heir died. Oh my God. I don't even want to open this right now. Oh, this sucks. I hate when you're playing with a Sim for a really long time. When they finally die, it's always so weird. <laughs> it makes me kind of sad. And then I feel weird about being sad about a Sim, but like it's normal, right? I can't believe I forgot she died. I guess I was trying to like block it out. <laughs> I didn't want to think about it. So like I was mentioning, I built this on that 50 by 40 lot in Tartosa. You might recognize this area. It's again where the wedding venue normally is. And this is our finished product of the Peach Generations house. So let me just quick give you a grave tour. <laughs> so on the side of the lot here, I keep all of my Sims graves. Um, Kind of in the front half, these are all of my Sims. And then in the back half, these are all graves that I've collected over the years that I've just like found out and about on other people's lots. Again, 
18 generations, okay? So it's not that abnormal. I've had a lot of Sims and they're all dead because it's been a long time. <laughs> I also have this shark pond where, um, you know, sometimes the Sims go in there if I want to get rid of them. And then back here, <laughs> the backyard is kind of the main highlight for me. So this area down here underneath the pergola, we have a nice fireplace and some seating. There's a lot of pretty flowers out here and this huge pool. Sorry about this, it's been floating a little bit clearly. And then this is that little tiny pool that I was talking about. When you delete the pool itself, you can see what we're working with. It's kind of like a weird pond, but it looks like a little hot tub in the middle of the pool, and I really like that about it. We also have some lounge chairs here, and I've got currently a toddler slide. <laughs> that is not there on the gallery. And then this part over here is my favorite. This is the grill and bar area. I really like this trellis setup next to it. I think that looks super cool. In the back, we have a small garden, and then in the way back, we have the horse stable, and then like a spot for the horse to run. On the gallery, this fence part is not open. It's like completely closed off and that was a mistake because the horses aren't smart and they get trapped a lot So I had to end up opening that up so they could get through still because they could walk through here or well, okay Maybe they can't also that's horse poop <laughs> ignore that too. <laughs> I had to, I had to open this All right I'm telling you that this full transparency I made a mistake by closing it off So I opened it up and then and then in the front yard We have this huge fountain also some skill things those are not there on the gallery either <laughs> We have some lounge chairs Chairs, a hot tub and then when you come inside in here this is like the main entryway we've got a small table a couple of my collectibles like this baseball bat from the criminal career I have some fish back here I have like a nice wall of family photos back here as well that is literally a photo of my sim dying <laughs> oh my god that one too no look this sim that's her so that's when her dad died and then that's when she died <laughs> Oh my god, this is kind of embarrassing. Okay, every single person in these photos is dead. Every single one of them. All right, except the dog. I keep giving the dog age down treats because Pulp will never die. Look at this thing. Isn't it so weird looking? <laughs> anyway, anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here is my living room. I've got a whole bunch of collectibles back here, like my marriage certificate and some bird feathers, gold bars. Uh, around this way, we have the kitchen. We've got some food bowls and stuff for the pets. There's a nice big dining room back here. This no poop sign is because I had a lactose intolerant sim for a while who used to poop on the floor when they would eat dairy by accident. So I put that up um, just to tell them to stop. This here is where my fire toilet is. Um, as you can see, it catches fire a lot. <laughs> So I've got that there. Um, I'm gonna get back to this. Ignore that, okay? Uh, down this way, this is the, the like little music room area. I haven't even finished filling out the photos here, but on this wall, I have all my collectibles that I was telling you about. This is our little office space. I've got things like a bag of money and some nice big bookshelves. This room is where my gen seven Sim, the pink Sim lived. Uh, she was like the grandma of these kids. And then this is the peach Jen's primary bedroom. This is what it finally ended up looking like after a lot of effort to redo it. It, and they have an ensuite bathroom here. When you come upstairs, this is a lot to look at. I know, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is the game and rat room that I was telling you about. And then these are all of the bright green rooms for all three of our kids. The kids are a part of the green generation, so they have all green rooms. Um, this kid's name is Moss, and so they have like a moss rug. <laughs> and this is their little bathroom. And then the other two kids, their names are Algae and Pickle, and these are their rooms. Um, yeah. Their mom's name is Princess, like Princess Peach. So <laughs> when I explain this stuff out loud, it sounds so weird, but that is the full tour of, oh, oh dear. Um, these are my goats. I sized them up. Um, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about that. <laughs> but the last thing, the last thing is the basement. Um, uh, this was not there originally, but my sim is in the detective career, and in that career, you get a lot of career rewards, including literal jail bars and like a bed and toilet and stuff. And so when I got them, I just put it down here because it was it was funny. Um, but I haven't actually put a sim down here. Okay, it looks bad, but I'm telling you, I haven't done anything bad in there yet. I don't know what the future holds, but I haven't made use of it. Okay, it's not as bad as it seems. <laughs> <laughs> I had the other day, I think it was when Pickle was born. They got home from the hospital, and you know how it just spawns the bassinet somewhere? Pickle's bassinet spawned here, <laughs> inside of the cell. Wait, hold on, I'll play the clip for you so you can see. Okay, so we wanted to name this baby Pickle. <laughs> that was voted by chat. Um, I, please, everybody, don't worry about that. <laughs> Just don't 
don't worry about that, okay? What you just saw, you didn't, don't, it's fine. Why did it spawn down there? What is it doing down there? Oh my god, oh my god. It's just my, I have like a cell in my basement. I don't, listen, I don't, okay. I also forgot it was there. And I don't know why the baby spawned down there. That is very alarming. I promise the baby's fine. I like this baby. And even I had forgotten about it. Like even I forgot this thing was down here. So that was kind of funny, but that is the full finish tour of our entire peach generation, not so berry house. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see the previous not so berry house that I built, I'll link that 64 by 64 horse ranch here on the end card in a second. Also, if you want to come by and watch my Twitch streams where I actually play with this household or watch us build stuff like this live, this build in particular took me like four days. <laughs> but if you want to watch it, I can link my Twitch channel down below too. I'm live there every single night. And in fact, tomorrow night, I'm going to be live until midnight celebrating the new year. So if you don't have any plans, you are all invited to our little Sims New Year's Eve party. But thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I am going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. Oh my god, every time I make a video about this family in The Sims, I feel kind of embarrassed explaining it all out loud. The graves look so bad.